So the woke hive mind has discovered my channel and has shown up in the comments to tell me that the woke hive mind doesn't exist. Apparently, this trans lesbian fox girl shared my video on wokeness, believing my clearly ironic thumbnail to have been completely serious, and now a bunch of Twitter degenerates are flooding my comment section. Now, I'm not too concerned about this. Views are views, and I'm quite happy with the attention it has brought to my channel. Thanks for the free promotion, everyone. And, by the way, for people who agree with me, please be kind and do not attack this person who initially tweeted my video. It's a 17-year-old child. No attacking children, people. The tweet is giving my videos free promotion, so it's all good. But anyway, what this whole thing demonstrates about these people is that they are really out of touch, not only with reality in general, but also with what life is like for people who disagree with them. For one thing, they think no one's actually being oppressed for being conservative, despite multiple examples I provided in my video of people being fired simply for their beliefs. But they also just generally have no idea what a conservative is actually like. I once met a liberal college freshman girl who grew up in a liberal household in a liberal city and had never actually met a real conservative. When she met a conservative for the first time, she explained to her that she must be mistaken because if she were really conservative, she would be a Nazi, because all conservatives are Nazis. She had heard people call conservatives Nazis her whole life, without ever having had explained to her the assumed knowledge that the term applied to political opponents is an analogy and not a literal statement. So in her mind, a conservative is literally someone who walks around with a Hitler stash and a Nazi patch on their arm, seeking to put Jews in camps again. And this is really on full display with all these people who are having a very hard time discerning what is clearly ironic, such as my really goofy thumbnail and clickbaity video titles from the serious arguments I've made. And it is pretty hilarious that they are so worked up about my clearly ironic profile picture when they are unironically using my little pony looking animal avatars as their online personas. Maybe it's because their own reality is so laughably ridiculous that they can't discern seriousness from obvious jokes. They don't seem to know, or simply don't care, that I can see they've only watched two minutes of my videos, which is usually just me introducing the topic, and are only reacting to the mere fact that I've used the word woke, which I also admit is a really simplistic term that isn't a legitimate, nuanced political term. And when I've acknowledged that certain jokes they've made at my expense are funny, despite disagreeing with their politics, they think I'm therefore just woefully ignorant that they've made a joke at my expense. They seriously think that people they disagree with are just hate robots with no personality or sense of humor or ability to laugh at themselves. But no, I seriously think it's hilarious that the thumbnail I made in like two seconds accidentally included the Portugal flag. You guys are right, that's funny. But now please actually engage with the substance of the arguments if you are in fact capable of rational thought. The great irony of this whole situation is that in the abundance of comments acting like my points are all completely ridiculous, they've actually proved all my points exactly. For instance, they want to claim simultaneously that wokeness is not a real thing in video games, but also that they want more wokeness in video games. Which is it? Is it only real for people who want more of it, but fake when someone complains about it? One person pressed me for a definition of wokeness, as if I hadn't spent multiple videos explaining what I meant, claiming it had no definition. But once I had defined it, he was like, what's wrong with that? So after claiming wokeness had no definition, he completely switched gears and defended it, thus proving my point that everything I'm complaining about actually does exist. Further, people have been proving my exact point that I made in my Rousseau video about true identity and morality, for them being merely a matter of expressing one's inner self, rather than being a matter of objective truth outside of ourselves. This can be seen in comments that can't comprehend the idea that I can simultaneously express distaste for modern media and not be a miserable person. You know, it may surprise you that some people have opinions they came to through rational thought rather than the purely emotional expression of their mental illnesses. Another example of this is the objection in this comment, which states that my belief in objective truth is unreasonable because it only reflects my own personal background and perception. Again, these people can't comprehend that a person is making a claim about what is objectively true about reality. They can only think in terms of my truth, my experience. If this really was a matter of mere differing backgrounds, then there would be no point in arguing. But the fact that they do find my statements objectionable proves that it's impossible to hold to the moral relativism they espouse. It's all just a mess of contradictions. Another assumption they keep making is that I'm trying to trick people into thinking I'm a centrist, when in reality, I'm secretly right-wing. 
So they keep trying to point out how hypocritical it is that I want right-wing ideas in media and don't want troons, gays, unrealistically strong women, and anachronistic diversity in my video games. I'm right-wing, guys. I'm open about it. But again, they've only looked at the thumbnail, thinking it's serious because they only have two brain cells and proceeded to burn a straw man. Another thing they'd realize if they'd actually watch my videos is that I don't have an idealistic view of what games were like back in the day. So they keep commenting things like, Dude, this game from 2005 had a gay character. My whole point in multiple of my videos is that what many people are calling wokeness now is the result of centuries of developments in Western thought. It's nothing new, it's just the unfolding of the inevitable results of those ideas. Yet even those who seem to have watched a larger portion of the videos don't seem to have comprehended anything. For instance, one person tells me to read political theory on a video where I cite seminal works on political theory. When I pointed out this fact, he said I should read Gramsci, seemingly unaware of the fact that I intentionally alluded to Gramsci's ideas in the very video he was commenting on, and another person on a video where I cite two of the most influential authors of fantasy to discuss the precedent of excellence they set, which has not been matched by the writing in fantasy video games, somehow only took away that I think they are the only good fantasy authors in existence. Seriously, these people need to work on their comprehension. It's one thing to disagree with someone, but it doesn't reflect your intelligence very well if you can't properly articulate what was just said in a way that is even remotely accurate. All of these comments saying, he's actually just upset about gay characters, as if they are saying the quiet part out loud, are completely missing the fact, probably due to only watching two minutes of one video, that I'm already saying that explicitly. Yes, my problem is gay characters. Yes, my problem is simply people left of center putting their ideas in media. I simply don't enjoy media that expresses brain-dead opinions, simple as The idea that a biological male can be a woman trapped in a man's body is an idea that was laughable by all of human civilization until very, very recently. The only examples to the contrary that people can find in history are a stretch so enormous that it is surprising they haven't pulled a muscle. For instance, the Greeks, who all supposedly had pronouns in their bios and whose ancient society was supposedly one big gay orgy, actually considered being an effeminate male taboo. Yes, pederasty was practiced, but to be on the receiving end, so to speak, made you a despised outcast in society. That's the best example anyone can find, and it is a far cry from what we have now. It is only postmodern relativism that has produced this strange ideological fad as it expresses itself today. But something which defines human identity by something so blatantly contradictory with biological facts and natural law is not an ideology that can be sustained for generations to come, in a generation or two, when the unholy unions of sodomites fail to produce any offspring, as they are prevented by the natural design of the world from doing, everyone will look back and wonder, how in the world did they find such ideas anything but laughable? But I get it. I bet you that every one of these people have parents who failed them in some way, and they are thus hostile toward past generations. I found a brave commenter wading through the sea of woke NPCs who made this exact point, because of their hatred of their parents and past generations, they have adopted an ideology and way of life, which is ultimately just a crypto religion, that is opposed to the family and values of their ancestors. It is the ideological form of teenage rebellion that refuses to get over their daddy issues and come to grips with reality. And to all of you hate watchers who are not so prideful as to deny this is true, I am genuinely sorry that your parents failed you. Boomers, Gen Xers, and Millennials for the most part have been awful parents. They have, for the most part, neglected to teach us valuable life skills, sent us off to be raised by public school teachers for most of our childhood, and were so focused on their careers that they hardly raised us at all. To be children raised by these generations is a truly traumatic thing, to the point that it is only against all odds that any of us turned out generally all right. But let me tell you, there is a Father in Heaven who loves you. You violated His commandments, rebelled against His created order, and hate who He created you to be. And he has decreed that all who sin against a perfect God and corrupt the world he created with their sin will receive the curse of death and eternal condemnation. This is something I deserve for my sin and which you deserve for yours. But hear this, it is truly glorious news. While we were still living in hatred, sexual immorality, envy, malice, lies, injustice, and utter depravity, while we were still living every moment according to an utter disregard for the Creator, who loving gave us life and all the blessings of this world. He still loved us and loved us to such an extent that he sent his only beloved son into the world as a man to suffer the same things we suffer commonly in our daily lives. 
to be betrayed by his very own people, and ultimately to suffer and die on a Roman cross in order to bear the penalty of death that we deserved in our place. Then he rose from the dead and ascended to his Father in heaven to intercede on our behalf. He paid the debt of death that we owed, so that if we simply put our faith in him, he will grant us life in return, and not only life, but joy and peace and love and eternal fellowship in his glorious presence. So please consider this. No matter what you've done, no matter how far from God that you feel that you are, you are not so far off that you cannot be saved. God is near to us all, and his offer of forgiveness is yours if you will accept it. The God of the universe, who created the galaxies, the vast, unsearchable depths of the oceans, who has sustained every breath taken by even the greatest men of human history, loved you so immensely that he gave his own infinitely worthy and morally spotless son to die in your place, to bear the burden of your own sins, just so that he can make you his own child. In him is joy unspeakable, life abundant, and goodness, truth, and beauty eternal. So I implore you, accept this offer, believe in Christ Jesus, the one true Lord and God of all creation, and have your sins washed white as snow, and in him find certainty about the nature of reality, objective moral standards to live by, a love for the person he created you to be, and true joy that surpasses all understanding. Then you can be hated by all men, attacked endlessly by brain-dead critics, and still find satisfaction in life at the end of the day, knowing you found that which truly lasts when all else, even natural life itself, fades away. I tell you this because I care about you, dear Twitter degenerate, and God cares for you all the more. Anyway, thanks for watching, even if you're just hate watching, please like and subscribe and all that.